Welcome everyone. In this video, I would like to share a short status update with you. So I have a few electronics on my table, as you can see, and uh, let's see what is this. So previously, a few months ago, maybe I had a video about strain gauges, small stamp like things, which can be used to measure very tiny displacements. And uh, now I would like to continue that uh, path because I finally found some time to follow up uh, that project. So I made some uh, significant uh, progress, I would say, with this uh, circuit. So let's start with the circuit first of all. So I just clean up this a little bit. So this is the main uh, circuit, what we can uh, see here. And it consists of three main uh, circuits. The first is an STM32 or blue pill. This will be used to communicate with the computer and also to take care of the data coming from the next circuit, which is an ADS1256. As you could see from my other videos, I went quite deep with this kind of circuit. So I shared all the details of how to manage the registers, how to change the data rate, how to capture the data from a single or multiple channels and so on and so on. And uh, actually this video will be an, a good example of how to use the ADS1256 in different applications. And then the circuits which are connected to the input of the or the inputs of the ADS1256, uh, these are four uh, resistance bridges and amplifiers for strain gauges. So either here at the end of this BNC uh, connector, you can see one uh, strain gauge, or I just put some in this uh, plastic bag. They are identical. So these kind of uh, strain gauges will be connected to the input of this uh, one of these uh, four circuits. They are identical. And what you have here, if I just uh, simplify the contents of this uh, printed circuit board, is there is a Wheatstone bridge. And uh, as we know, the Wheatstone bridge consists of uh, four resistors, uh, two series, and these are connected parallel uh, to each other. And three of the resistors can be found on this uh, board. And the fourth resistor in the circuit will be this uh, strain gauge. And also one of these resistors, uh, if I'm correct, is this uh, trimmer potentiometer. So you can uh, shift the, let's say, baseline or zero level of the Wheatstone bridge by changing one of the components. And then the output voltage of the Wheatstone bridge is amplified by an op amp here. And that is just uh, directed to the output. So in nutshell, when you change the uh, deformation of this uh, strain gauge, then you will receive a proportional uh, response as a voltage on the output of uh, these circuits. So then what we do, we deform this guy here, which will change its resistance. This circuit will convert the change of the resistance into change of voltage. And the change of the voltage will be measured by the ADS1256. And uh, therefore the voltage will be converted into digital signal. This digital signal through the SPI uh, bus will go to the STM32 circuit. And then it will be processed just a little bit. And then that uh, bit or bit proportional to the voltage here will be sent to the computer. So this is what uh, we have here. And as you can see, uh, this kind of frame is a small uh, 3D printed plate. It just makes easier to take care of the uh, circuits. And as you can see, nothing else will be connected to this uh, STM32, at least with this circuit than uh, the ADS1256. Uh, so that's very simple. I also made uh, this kind of uh, 
extension board or I don't even know how to call it, but uh, we will be able to connect the four uh, power inputs for this uh, four circuits. And then this will be the common ground with the four pins. So that is the gray cable here. And uh, this will go to the ADS1256 uh, right here. This specific board has two different kinds of input. If you have a five volt input here with the blue uh, connector, then that will go to a voltage regulator and then everything will be taken care of within the circuit. Or you can like, let's say directly power this unit. Uh, if you use the DV, DD and the D, G and D uh, pins, but in this case you have to use 3.3 watts. And then finally we have this uh, Dupont or uh, jumper terminal and uh, that will be connected here here to the 5 volt and then uh, basically here we take out the power uh, put it on this board and then distribute it among the five other devices and then uh, i replace these uh, things so originally these circuit boards had the uh, strain gauge directly soldered into them, but I removed uh, all the strain gauges. Those are the ones which I was showing in this package. And what I did, I replaced uh, the connectors to this XH 2.54 uh, connectors. Actually, I can really recommend you all of these are those connectors. Uh, you can buy this box. I, I put it in the description and I just found this very very useful so you just need uh, these kind of uh, stuff uh, and the crimping tool I also put that in the description and uh, this just makes your job so much easier and much more cleaner so then what we have here is these uh, two pin connectors and then now I can show this uh, enclosure here so these are all the four uh, inputs of these uh, circuits so what we will have or what we have already uh, I decided to use BNC uh, connectors because they are quite uh, nice uh, to work with and since I did not know how much cable I will use for the strain gauges because I don't yet know how to or where to apply them then I took these uh, screw terminals with the BNC ending so this is very nice because I can just put this on and just uh, use it and this can be rotated so you can align the cables or the terminals as you want and uh, yeah you can see that they fit next to each other very nicely so I just continue to uh, line this up just to show you as a demonstration how nicely you can work with this so yeah, you can have these things, you can put anything on the other side, but then this is a very nice uh, rigid connection. And I think it also looks a bit more professional than let's say banana plugs or uh, banana terminals. So yeah, I like this better. So then, uh, yeah, you can remove them in a random order as well. Yeah, it's nothing uh, fancy. I might have to tighten one of the screws but yeah so I have these I have this thing and I have this uh, circuit board uh, collection so what I will do I have the missing parts just uh, the bottom plate so I will just put this here maybe fix it somewhere with some hot glue just to make it uh, stable and screw everything together and then I will show you a small demonstration on the computer. I will have a software for this, uh, specifically for this thing written, both for the Arduino or STM32, it doesn't matter, and both for the computer. Uh, but I will put that in the next video. But in this video, I want to show you that this works. So I will basically just wire this up, uh, connect it to the computer and just connect uh, this uh, string gauge to one of the channels and uh, we will see if I start to like uh, move this or just touch this like this uh, or deform it 
uh, what happens with the voltage and we will not uh, calibrate it or anything at this moment I just want to show you that this thing already works so let's jump to the computer and have a few more minutes of discussion uh, regarding this circuit so I am here and uh, I have opened the terminal from the Arduino uh, studio so as you can see there are two messages on the terminal already that just means that I have started up the ADS uh, 1256 and everything is now at the default value so I just want to show you that uh, this works so I will just monitor the first uh, channel of the ADS 1256 so here I just connected the strain gauge to the first uh, channel so I just send a comment and uh, we will see what happens so for me the A command will tell the uh, STM32 to read uh, the first channel of the ADS 1256 so now you can see this is just the raw data and we are somewhere around 386 387 thousand and a little bit so now I touch this uh, sensor and you should see some uh, significant uh, changes so now I bend it and you see that we went up to uh, 400 uh, something thousand so I bend it again so this is like 669 and then I bend it in the other direction so you see that the number is dropping so now this is let's say the intermediate or medium value or middle value so now I bend towards the positive direction and now this seems to be the maximum and now I bend it towards the negative direction and this seems to be the, the minimum so you can see that this response is very well very quickly and very nicely so this works and uh, I think all the other channels work in the same way so there is no need to do any kind of demonstration so the next uh, demonstration will be uh, that I will show you how this works with the proper uh, computer software uh, together so I will write some software that will capture the four channels and will visualize the uh, data from the four channels maybe I will also make some uh, calibration and at the end of this process I will glue one of these uh, strain gauges uh, on the surface of some metal strip or metal plate which I can easily bend so it will be some thin uh, aluminium bar or something and uh, we will see how that works and we will also see if we can extract something which is like physically meaningful value so this was just a follow-up video but I wanted to share this video because I think this will be useful for uh, many people maybe uh, especially for those who are interested in data acquisition and uh, material science or mechanical engineering because these can be used uh, in these fields uh, quite a lot or even I would say civil engineering or architecture maybe it can be used in buildings or bridges something like that so I hope that this video was uh, interesting for you and uh, in the next video as I said I will just uh, write a better software uh, better than this uh, terminal and we will visualize all the data and we will try to get some more meaningful values so until that uh, thank you for watching the video Please uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, you can visit my website, curiousscientist.tech. And uh, see you in the next video.